This is an exhibition which looks at the life of Queen Victoria, but really looking at um, how Victoria created and made a public image that endures still to this day. It says a lot about Queen Victoria, especially about her later life. She had this sort of genuine interest in India and that goes from the fact that she took it upon herself to learn things like um, Urdu in, in later age, but it sort of manifested itself as well in the decoration of her house at Osborne, but also in the dress and clothes that she wore. I think the way that I see Victoria as a historian on one part, as a history teacher, and then also somebody that comes from a Punjabi background. I feel that she is somebody that saw India as this exotic, faraway place. She herself never went to India to see it for herself, and she was only hearing stories from those around her. I feel she's someone who really misunderstood what the empire actually meant, um, and was somebody that wasn't receiving the full picture of what empire meant. One of the the extraordinary features of this exhibition is the amount of dress that we have that belongs to, belong to Queen Victoria. And Victoria was always very particular about what she wore, particularly in later life. What I love about the dress from the Museum of London is that we see that um, Victoria, even though it's a black morning dress, it incorporates, um, I would call, kind of South Asian motifs throughout it. They're actually kind of almost quite Islamic in style. She was seeing the, the beautiful, exotic side of India, but for me, I feel she's somebody who wasn't seeing the reality of what it really was. No, and I think that it was, I think people consciously tried to keep that reality mm. away from her. One of the characters we introduce, um, who is very important to Queen Victoria, is of course, the character of Julep Singh. He was the last Maharaja of the Sikh Empire, and the last, owner before Queen Victoria of the Colonel Diamond, which was of course very important for Victoria's identity as ruler of India. But of course the character of Judith Singh means an awful lot to the people of the Punjab. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that came out during our community project as well, that, that relationship with not only the Sikh community, but I think the wider South Asian diaspora as well with Dalit is that it symbolizes quite a lot for them. Um, it's quite a painful symbolism, not only of the collapse of the Sikh Empire, but also everything that happened after that, from that point all the way up to independence and partition. Um, so Dilip Singh, I think, symbolises a lot for the community. So I'm really glad he is actually a part of this exhibition. And for a lot of the general public that know nothing about him or nothing about his relationship with Victoria, this will definitely open the door and open a lot of people's eyes to who he was and what he really symbolises. So we've got his jacket, so I'm pleased we're able to like kind of put him, put him back back in the palace. I think for me it's kind of like a big lesson curatorially, just to kind of let that community in to realise that, you know, their voices they have the same weight as like my kind of like the the voice of the academy as mm. it was, you know, the voice of the community, the voice of society that's the voice we need to hear yeah. in our museums. And they're just as valid and just as important. More important, probably mm. more important. Mm. But I think that's a really interesting part of what this project meant, that all the individuals in that community project actually got to see these pieces before they went on display. They got to see them in person, stand in front of them, spend time looking at it, um, and spend time thinking about what it felt for them to, to look at these objects and what they meant to them personally. Um, and it ended up being an amazing project with quite a few amazing pieces of poetry at the end and, and some of them are displayed in the exhibition now. It's history that I wasn't taught in school mm. at all. Um, I think we were kind of almost taught that, oh, the British Empire it was all about economics. Mm. Yeah, a lot of it is still focused on the economic side, the railroads, that, that same kind of picture that's been in, in British history for quite some time and it's I guess up to up to us to, to show this other side of the narrative and I think what the exhibition has done is it's opened a door to what empire really meant um, and I guess it's something that I, I describe as decolonizing our minds, decolonizing the classroom, what, whatever you want to describe it as. I think it's a process that we now need to do as historians or those that are interested in history to understand this bigger picture now.